inside your computer there is this little device here called a central processing unit. The central processing unit is what does all of the calculations inside your computer. It's an amazing little device that uh, does absolutely everything. Without the CPU, the computer is, it, it can't do much at all, can't do anything. So the CPU is uh, actually quite tiny. So an actual CPU is about the size of your little fingernail. Here you can see, over here, a bunch of microprocessors as they get manufactured. And you can see next to a pin, which is what this uh, metal bit is here, quite how tiny it is. I'm going to show you how tiny it really is by showing you a short video. So this is a zoom in to a microprocessor. We're just using a digital camera at the moment. And this is the bit that is smaller than your little fingernail. I'm going to move the video on a bit. So we start to get to the more interesting part. And you can see some of the detail is becoming clear. Now, as we zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, we get below the point where we can actually use a digital camera. And we need to use something called an electron microscope. Here we go. And you see this line here is one millimeter and we're still nowhere near the detail level of the processor. As we scan in and in and in, we start to really get down into the detail. So we're starting to see some of the high level structure of the chip now. This is uh, the sort of power lines that get taken around in the chip. And you can see here, this is six microns. So that's six one millionths of a, mil, uh, of a meter. And we come down now to one micron. So that is one millionth of a meter. So we're right in what looks like the detail now. And what you'll see appear in just a second is a square. And remember, this was one millionth of a meter. And each of these little squares here, that's about the size of a regular transistor on a chip. So actually, the components we're talking about are incredibly tiny. Now, this is actually a chip from about 1995, and chips are about 10 times as small again these days so it just gives you an idea of how incredible the engineering is so we're going to take a look now at how a microprocessor actually works here we have a very simple model of the cycle that a processor goes through so this is the cpu here and we've got fetch decode and execute and it goes around in a cycle fetch sends off to memory to get the next instruction. This is the memory up here. And it gets back the memory, in the instruction, and it's in the form of a binary number, just like this. So it brings that back to the processor. What then happens is we move into decode. So here we have the instruction, and it's sliced into bits. And each of these bits has a different meaning should say parts rather than bits, shouldn't I? So, for example, this might mean to add. And then the second part is a number. And this might be an actual number. Or it could refer to a location, again, up in memory. So we fetch the instruction. We understand what the different parts mean. And then we execute, which means we carry out the instruction. We do it. And once we've done the instruction, we go and fetch the next instruction, decode it, do it, fetch the next instruction, decode it, do it, over and over again. And in a modern processor, this is happening about 3 billion times a second. Now, this is what the inside of a processor looks like. And it might clear up a few things that you might be wondering. So first of all, there's a few different parts to this processor. 
So there is the control unit. The control unit is the thing that tells the rest of the processor what to do. There's the arithmetic and logic unit, and this works out all of the sums and does logical comparisons. So if this is more than this, do that. So it does the comparison to tell you whether one thing is more than the other. Then there's the immediate access store, and this is where the CPU stores data while it's working on it. In the immediate access store, there's all sorts of places it stores data, but there's two very special ones. The first one is called the program counter, and the program counter remembers which is the next instruction. So on the previous slide, we were talking about fetching the next instruction. Well, how do we know which one that is? Well, that's kept track of in the program counter. So we do instruction number one, then instruction number two, then instruction number three. And later on in the program, we might say, go back to instruction number one again. And this is where it's kept. The accumulator is a very special place in the CPU because that stores the result of the most recent calculation. We've got main memory down the bottom here, and the main memory obviously stores all the programs and data that are currently being run. So when we fetch the control unit, us, it gets the next instruction from main memory, it stores it in the immediate access store, it updates the program counter to set the instruction to the next number up, and then it can use the control unit to get the arithmetic and logic unit to carry out the instruction. We have the input over here, so when we do things with the computer, that signal gets to the processor. And we also have output, so when the processor has worked something out, it can actually send a signal out into the world again. So that is how the computer works.